So, good morning, everyone. Hello and welcome to our Horizon Weekly Insider as well. As usual, sorry, uh, number 11. So, happy Thursday. And as, as usual, please remember that the recording of this call will be available in, in our uh, YouTube uh, channel as well as in, a, in our Horizon podcast. Uh, please remember as well to ask your questions uh, so we can have a good uh, feedback at the end. And let's start with the updates from the engineering department. Luca, if you would like to go ahead. Sure. Thank you, Angie. Uh, hello, everybody. This is Luca from uh, Milano, Italy. So this is a very important week for Horizon for multiple reasons. And uh, among the others, we deliver the alpha milestone of the sidechain project. Together with it, we published a new uh, white paper. And uh, later this week, in two days from now, actually, we are going to have a new software deprecation. So a new software is replacing the current one. And I'll start with the topic, uh, so later Alberto can continue on uh, um, the sidechain topic, uh, the, the other topic, which is the sidechain one. So for what regards the deprecation, um, uh, we, will have, we will have it in, uh, in two days, as I was saying. It will happen on Saturday, 26th of October at about uh, 12 p.m. And uh, we have uh, uh, 12 p.m. GMT, of course. We have contacted all the partners and exchanges multiple times, in particular, NG and Rowan were the ones doing the uh, our work here. And we have uh, received the multiple upgrade confirmations from a lot of them, or just pod positive feedbacks in some case, uh, saying that they will they are ab about to update before the deprecation. This also applies to our biggest mining pools. So we have the full support of the different Horizon stakeholders as uh, usual. Then the two wallets that needed to be made compatible with the new release have been updated and are already out. So people can download the, the new version of them. And uh, I'm referring to Sphere by Ryzen and Swing, of course. And finally, Chronic and Mac are updating the 40 servers before deprecation, which is the very last activity on our to-do list for this deprecation cycle. Uh, some uh, Final social media will also follow, but I guess Lucy will speak about that. So I can pass it to Alberto now, and uh, he will be able to go on uh, with the sidechain project update. Please, Alberto, it's all yours. Thanks, Luca. And yes, as you say, this is a very important week because uh, we uh, published uh, our first uh, version of our SDK, this first milestone uh, that includes some um, functionalities that I will uh, just briefly uh, remember here. So uh, this SDK um, um, actually gives you the possibility to run uh, multiple sidechain nodes, so a network of different sidechain nodes, and uh, uh, with the possibility to synchronize this network and uh, have these nodes synchronized together. Also, we implemented uh, a part of the cross-chain transfer protocol. So this means that uh, the sidechain is able to receive uh, forward transfers from, uh, from main chain. And uh, so um, in the end, this means that uh, sidechain is able, a sidechain node, a sidechain forger uh, is able to uh, take uh, main chain uh, related main chain transaction related to that sidechain and include this uh, information in a sidechain block so this is the basic part for uh, transferring coins from from main chain to sidechain and uh, uh, also um, uh, one of the uh, functionality that is already implemented here is the possibility to transfer coins between uh, uh, inside the sidechain, so uh, implemented inside sidechain uh, transfers. And moreover, uh, we implemented a, a set of APIs, HTTP APIs for uh, interacting with the sidechain node. So this means, for example, knowing the status of the, of the, of the node and uh, uh, forge a block and so on. Um, the possibility, we have also the possibility, uh, and the developer has also the possibility to uh, uh, start, uh, uh, let me say, modifying and introducing new kind of a transaction and new kind of boxes. So um, 
in such a way uh, it will be possible to introduce uh, eventually new rules, new data, uh, and uh, new kind of boxes in the in the Scorex uh, terminology. And uh, um, also, uh, we uh, included a tool for creating the, uh, let me say, the um, Genesis info that are able, that are needed for uh, bootstrapping a new sidechain node. All these, these things, uh, let me say, uh, have the corresponding part in the Zen, in Zendi, so in our uh, main chain. So these uh, obviously imply uh, compiling uh, uh, the proper branch uh, of Zendi. And so, and let me say, with the proper uh, compiled version of Zendi and, uh, and the session node, uh, a, a developer will be able to test, let me say, these functionalities and uh, make running, uh, make the node running in direct test. Um, okay, and this is, let me say, very briefly, uh, some of the functionalities that uh, we implemented during the, uh, the last months and that we published uh, at the beginning of this week. Okay, but now we're already focused on the, on the next steps. So uh, we have been uh, uh, scheduling uh, next activities and uh, uh, these next activities are uh, related to, for example, the epochs. So uh, we are introducing uh, uh, the epochs uh, uh, where that are needed for publishing the certificate and then collect uh, withdrawals requests. So what the, what does this mean? This means that uh, if you want to withdraw some coins from the side chain and take back them to the, to the main chain, this means that you, you should post in side chain a withdrawal request mm -hmm. transaction and uh, uh, these will be collected, uh, let me say, uh, by the network and uh, included in blocks, so obviously. And at the end of the epoch, uh, it will be created a, a certificate uh, that also will include these withdrawal requests, and uh, and, and in, the, in such case will be called backward transfer. And this certificate will be then sent to Mention to allow you to have the let me say withdrawn amount in Mention available. But also, uh, we're introducing rules uh, for managing forks in Mention, improving uh, and implementing, let me say more than improving, implementing the consensus in Sidechain because actually is a very simple one. And now we need to introduce the Roboros browse implementation uh, with the proper modifications. And, uh, uh, and the, let me say, this is mm, the, the first uh, activities that we are going to to work on in the next uh, uh, weeks. And almost everything. Thank you. I think so. Uh, of course, we will also provide all this uh, information during our live stream, the quarter, first quarterly live stream. Uh, I also think it's uh, all, and actually I already cannibalized all Chronix updates. Sorry, Chronix, for that. <laughs> Back to you, Angie. Thank you, Luca and Alberto. Yeah. And well, let's see what's left for you, Kronik. <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll expand a bit on, on what you said, uh, Luca. You did a very good job of stealing my thunder here. So mm -hmm. um, yeah, so Swing and Sphere uh, updates are both out. And this is a mandatory update. So uh, everybody has to update. Um, if you don't update, uh, the wallets will stop working, but nothing will break. So if you forget to update and do this at a later date, that's not an uh, not a problem. Uh, now for the um, maintenance uh, plan tomorrow, so we will be upgrading the uh, tracking server challenge mm -hmm. nodes. So uh, for uh, tomorrow, short interruptions in challenge availability can be expected, but uh, no other service outages should happen. And uh, we will also update the public block explorers. Um, when we do that, there might be short periods where some of our light client wallets um, do not work as expected, but this um, shouldn't be longer than 30 minutes. And um, yeah, so sorry, but that unfortunately has to happen every time we do a release. And the um, initially announced update of um, aggregating seven days worth of payments into a single payment on the tracking system 
won't be deployed tomorrow quite yet. Uh, we're we shutting, uh, shuttling this to a later time uh, after some more testing has been completed. And I'm posting again all of the links to the wallet and note tracking updates. Thank you, Chronic. Next one would be Alan on the note side. No updates from Ellen, I think, today. OK, thank you. Next one would be Gustavo on the UX side. Hi, everyone. For the help desk, we have Spencer to give us the update. Spencer. Hey, Gustavo, it looks like Spencer doesn't have a, a mic today. I'm back. Okay. I would like to say that you could scroll backwards in the text uh, channel to 1125 to see the actual metrics posted. I'd like to take a moment to say for community members that are listening that we do actually maintain a service desk as a necessary function of a real business. And with the extensive growth in the use of the faucet, we have seen a surge in faucet-related tickets. I'm happy to report that we're able to keep that number of tickets uh, that require support in the low single digits. Uh, we're also keeping our customer satisfaction rating high. Uh, for a last comment, I'd like to say that the individuals providing the service desk support were also involved in the testing of the Sphere release. So uh, it has been a busy week, and that's the report from the service desk. Okay, thanks, Spencer. Besides that, we've been working on the faucet, adding new features on the administrative side, and also in new exploiting detection method. And it's everything on our side. Thank you, guys. The next one would be Rowan on the BD side. Good morning. Good afternoon, everyone. Not too much to update from me today. Uh, I'll just start off looking at Luca and Andrew. No news from Binance, Bittrex, and Huobi on whether or not they've updated, but I will chase them this morning and let you guys know. Uh, just yesterday, I did an interview with Crypto Rich, which will be coming out in the next couple of days. So thank you, Madar, for organizing that. And then the other project that I've been working on is kind of coming towards an end now. Uh, as an organization, we're obviously looking to get our hands on as much high-quality data as we possibly can just to make sure that we are making informed decisions based on real, tangible facts. Uh, and the current project that we're looking to kind of pull in some more high-quality data is with Flipside, uh, their analytic division. We've been working on this for the past uh, four to six weeks, something along those lines. And we're at a point now where we're reasonably happy with the data that we have. We're happy with the, the way it's presented. And we will be presenting that to the team so we can start using this data internally in the next couple of days. Uh, very, very close to being complete there. And that's pretty much it for me at the moment. Uh, there's nothing really else that I can speak about publicly at this point, unfortunately. If anyone else from the BD team wants to jump in, please feel free to do so. Uh, Ron, it's Mac. I'm, I just wanted to jump in because uh, my mic was muted before, but um, one critical thing I wanted to mention is that the impersonation that is going on um, has kind of advanced. I was impersonated over the weekend, so were you, Rowan, um, and a couple of other people were, and I just wanted to reiterate that uh, to the community that we will never ask for any funds um, directly. Uh, we will never... DM anybody and ask them to in install any tools that would allow remote administration to their machines um, and just be very suspect of, of anybody um, who looks like they may be from the team um, un sending you unsolicited direct messages. And just to kind of add on to the back of that, if there is any doubt at all, you can reach out to any of the admins on Discord. They're in purple. Um, and we can confirm, and you can also raise a ticket on the service desk, and the guys that I'll be more than happy to verify that you're actually speaking to a team member. But yeah, great point, Mac. No, thanks thanks for adding that, Ron, because, um, yeah, that's what we we had to say that over the weekend. So, yeah, that, that, that is exactly what you need to do. Help desk is the actual, actually the safest place to, to check you're going to be talking to a real team member. Uh, it's Vano speaking. 
from Georgia. So we have a quite nice update from our region. Four Clock has published a news about our sidechain alpha and white paper 2.0. Uh, this is uh, quite a nice news because Four Clock is uh, the largest Russian language um, blockchain publication about crypto and blockchain in general. And I'm also preparing for SFL Tbilisi Regional Conference, uh, which will be on November 2nd. And uh, our marketing team uh, will provide um, updated materials for me to have there. Special thanks uh, to them. And uh, also today, uh, after our calls, I will be uh, going to attend um, the pre-event gathering session for Startup Grind Europe Asia Connect Conference, a large one which will be here in Tbilisi on November 8th uh, through 10th. Uh, And we might get an opportunity to present uh, there with Booth. That's all from me. Thank you all, guys. Okay, next one would be Jonas on the Horizon Developer Environment updates. Hey, everyone. Um, so I think the most notable update is a call we had with the North Humbria University yesterday. Um, Mac and Rowan were on the call, and um, they are very keen to have us do a bunch of presentations and talks at their university, getting students interested in our project and... Um, eventually doing some UX analysis and testing for us as well. So I'm pretty stoked about those news. Um, Other than that, not much to update on this Thursday. Thank you very much. Did did you see the email this morning, um, Jonas? Yep, I did. Yeah, so we've got a a solid date for the first one on the 20th, 20th of November. Thank you. Next one would be Lucy on the marketing side. Hello, everyone. Um, so, uh, first of all, uh, welcome, er- uh, well, welcome back, Erica. Uh, so she was away for her honeymoon in uh, uh, beautiful Europe. And so I'm sure she just couldn't wait to come back and to work and join our crazy party with us. Uh, so welcome back. Uh, and then the um, the main task this week obviously has been the promotion of our sidechain alpha and then the new white paper. So congrats uh, to the entire team, uh, especially the engineering team, bringing us this major uh, milestone. Uh, and then also a huge shout out to our team, particularly our marketing, um, sorry, our designer team, uh, Linda and Mark on developer Twine for a timely uh, release. And then I'll give a summary of the initial launch communications. So we have an updated homepage uh, featuring our sidechain alpha and then a new white page. Uh, we have a brand new uh, sidechain web page, uh, and then we'll publish the first video of the sidechain video series. Uh, uh, you can watch that on YouTube channel sidechain page. Uh, Rob and Ralph give a, uh, a brief introduction of our sidechain development and uh, projects directions. So there are several videos coming up. Uh, the next one is scheduled to be the 28th. Uh, and then we also, uh, we also have a cool video uh, made by our designer uh, and then we have published a uh, uh, blog post announcement and then sent out a, news, a, a newsletter yesterday and then uh, uh, not obviously social media communication along with all that uh, so these are just our initial communications uh, we have further uh, promotions lined up uh, to uh, further push uh, attention and engagement and one of the promotions is in a competition for participants to win free horizon no hosting and Jonathan uh, will tell us more about that uh, and then other things the marketing is working on is preparing for our first quarterly uh, uh, quarterly live stream which is coming up next week uh, it's next Wednesday at 1 p.m eastern time or 5 p.m UTC uh, and then we will send we will also be sending out reminders of 2.019 software upgrade. Uh, and lastly, we are going to. Uh, we are also working on updating all marketing assets to reflect our new uh, uh, technology breakthrough, the site chain development, and a new message. That's it from me. Thank you. Thanks, Lucy. Hey, everybody. Jonathan here. Two very quick updates. So we're moving ahead with uh, the node competition. Uh, we'll put it online either today or tomorrow, and 
Uh, the summary basically is we'll have several winners. There are going to be 18 total winners, and they, they can win between one and three months of free node hosting. So we'll host the competition on Gleam, and there'll be certain ways to enter. So, for example, you could uh, join our mailing list. You can follow us on Twitter. You can check out our blog. And kind of the more tasks you do, the better your chances of winning. So the competition will last about three weeks, and we're super excited for it because we've had already, even before posting it, really great feedback from the community, and they're they're really excited about it. Um, so... So that's uh, the node competition. You'll see that shortly. And, and the other thing is next week, we're going to be releasing a community survey. What we like to do is kind of have a community survey every year with the same or same theme of questions and then compare the community survey year after year. And that way we can kind of get a pulse on how the community is changing and how the priority of the community is changing. So keep your eye out for that. And um yeah, that's it for today. Thanks, everyone. Okay, thank you. Next one would be uh, Rosario with Brogdon Engineering. Well, I'd also like to jump on the congratulations train. Uh, so the engineering team delivered a year's worth of R&D, and uh, that was a, a fantastic milestone to to finally meet. So I am wrapping my time here in Milan, and I've been having a series of strategy level, uh, strategic le uh, level discussions uh, that uh, ultimately culminated in the uh, white paper that was uh, recently released. And uh, one of the important, or a, an important part of that conversation is going to be uh, defining the road to beta. So uh, that's. Uh, something that uh, Alberto and I will be uh, and Luca discussing uh, here in uh, my last day in Milan. So that'll be really exciting. So we can uh, communicate that the timeline to the community and set the expectations of, of what beta is going to uh, comprise. So uh, we also have great news. Uh, we have a new senior software engineer, uh, C++ is uh, primary language, but he is fantastic. He's uh, Alberto the third, not quite literal the third, but he's going to be the third Alberto on our team. And uh, his initial focus will be Zendi. So that uh, also coincides uh, very well uh, as the Zendi strategy will uh, change here in the upcoming months. And that is it from my side. Thank you. Thanks, Rosario. Ralph, would you like to add anything? Um, just a, a couple of brief things. Looking forward to the investor dinner next week in New York City. Um, and Medar has been uh, setting me up with video interviews with podcast and uh, YouTube streamers so I can give updates on the side chain. So I appreciate that and happy to do more of those types of activities uh, to let everybody know uh, everything that's going on. That's all I got. I'm uh, from Atlanta this week. Thanks. Thank you, Ralph. And now for the closing part, Rob. Mm -hmm. Hey, everyone. Um, so I'm going to jump onto the, the congratulations train as well and just really uh, highlight how, how important of a delivery the alpha was on Monday. Uh, so we're talking about thousands of lines of code, original work, taking a concept from R&D to uh, something that now other blockchain engineers can tinker with. Um, so it is a milestone, but it's a really important one. It demonstrates that we're able to uh, really think innovatively and deliver on that vision, uh, not just copy paste, not just tinker on the margin, but to actually you know create a real innovation and deliver that. And mind you, deliver it in... Uh, prolonged bear market, uh, right? So we've been, and, and this is a, a point, I've seen, I saw a question here earlier about when are we going to be delivering the, the treasury voting sidechain, um, clearly after beta, uh, but the, the point is we're in a very resource constrained environment just due to the price of Zen. So we are going through these strategy sessions right now, of figuring out how to prioritize. And because we have limited resources and we have to keep delivering innovative technology and maturing that technology to the point where it can actually be useful in the real world. Um, you know, we have to be very judicious with what we spend money on right now. Uh, and of course, if, if Zen were to, you know, recover in price and our resources recover, then of course we can expand the set of things that we're actually prioritizing. 
The other big thing that we released on Monday was White Paper 2.0. And what I want to highlight about this is it's a living document, and that means it's going to be updated over time, but it does much better reflect where we stand now as a project and where we want to go. Um, so when we put together the original white paper back in 2017, we had a pretty good idea of at least where we wanted to initialize the project and, and start uh, marching towards. But you know, almost three years later, uh, things have evolved. We've actually delivered on you know almost everything that we said we were going to deliver on. There were other things that we thought we wanted to do that you know after more thought and kind of a reality check, we realized um, weren't as important or um, weren't you know doable in the decentralized framework that we wanted. So white paper 2.0 is very important. And the, you know, the, the new direction in this, I can say, is uh, very simple main chain, extremely simple. We want it to be as uh, secure and you know, uh, massively scalable as possible. It, it has two main functions, and you can read more details in the white paper. One, to provide uh, kind of a, a universal currency within our ecosystem, Zen, uh, which will be useful in this kind of ecosystem of sidechains but then also to, to maintain that ecosystem of sidechains. So the, the core protocol is, uh, you know, the, the way that we want to bring this architecturally is such that the core protocol's job is to now um, be able to host you know, all of these, this ecosystem of sidechains in a totally decentralized, decoupled way where we don't have to program the logic of any particular sidechain into the main chain. Uh, we just provide a protocol that's decentralized and scalable. Uh, but in this context, we need to think about simplifying uh, Zen D, you know, simplifying the, the core main chain. Uh, and this is, I think, very exciting. Uh, Rosario alluded to the fact that we're bringing on new engineers. Uh, very excited for the fact that now we're going to have more dedicated engineers to the core protocol. And what this is going to mean over the coming year is innovation in the core protocol. So far, we've you know, we bootstrapped the project with a Zcash code base. Uh, now, and, and then we innovated on the sidechain side. Now we're bringing on resources to innovate on the core protocol piece of that and to continue the innovation on the sidechain uh, framework such that we can actually bring useful applications to market. Um, so a lot of good stuff in the white paper. Please check it out if you haven't. Distribute it. You know, if you're listening to this, again, I, I know that you're uh, uh, very interested in this project. So get out there and help um, expose it to other people because really we have... Uh, a fantastic project. We are, I think, now in the top 10 in terms of FCAS overall ratings. Our FCAS scores jumped up as well. So we need to, everyone's got to get the word out that we are a very top tier and, you know, uh, innovative project. So on that note, uh, I'm actually calling in from Croatia right now where I just gave a pitch uh, in a fintech conference uh, with um, some partners who have... Um, uh, a lot of experience building uh, on exchange factory marketplaces. So basically, digital invoices that that um, are tradable um, on, on on an actual exchange. Um, and these guys have actually implemented this in Argentina and Peru. And now we've partnered with them as our technology provider to create a blockchain based platform uh, to you know significantly ex expand the transparency and trust within the system so that you can trust the system and not the participants of the system. So it's a very, uh, I would say, fantastic application of our sidechain technology. Uh, so I'm very happy to be here um, to pitch this. And let's see what else. So we're, Rolf alluded to the fact that we're co-hosting an investor dinner. Or Horizon Labs is co-hosting an investor dinner with Grayscale next week in New York City. Um, so we're going to head out there and uh, really just pitch to a group of investors why we think that Horizon is a, a top-tier blockchain project and all of the amazing things that we, we intend to do with it. So that's uh, all that I have updated here. I guess we can open it up to Q&A. Yeah, we've got uh, quite a few questions. The top one is, when is sidechain beta planned for? And will it be on the main chain or still on testnet? Well, that's a wonderful question. Who wants to answer that? Alberto, Rosario? I know you guys were talking about it while I've been gone. Uh, we, we're still discussing and trying to uh, pare down what is uh, what is beta, but uh, as it currently stands, it looks like we're we're still going to be on on uh, testnet. But Alberto, you can go in, in into detail as to why uh, you're thinking that. Okay. Yes. The, actually, we're say identifying the specific feature that we are going to include in beta, but uh, for sure it is going to be. Uh, we are going to cover 
the full circle in terms of uh, transfer. I mean, uh, actually, we covered the transfer from uh, mention to site, and we are going to cover the transfer from site to mention. And uh, uh, as I said before, uh, uh, the consensus will be implemented. And let me say, it will be. Uh, let me say that the uh, the main functionalities. Uh, are going to be included in this beta release. Obviously, uh, uh, there would be the need for, uh, let me say, uh, additional work for stability, but it will be uh, a first release with the full cycle and the full circle so, um, of functionalities. So uh, it will be possible to, to let me say, design and, uh, uh, and test uh, the, the 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 whole cycle, and uh, regarding what is going to be included, I mean, uh, in terms of specific functionalities, is something that is still, let me say, under uh, review because, uh, as we uh, said in the in the last weeks, we are uh, also have been working on an extensions of the model that, uh, let me say, isn't has not yet been disclosed. And uh, uh, I would like to have in this beta release this uh, extended model implemented. So uh, a paper uh, is currently, uh, let me say, um, uh, we're writing a paper uh, about this, uh, but we are also planning to have a first implementation uh, according to, to this extended model. Uh, that I think it would be quite interesting. So hope this answered to the question. Yep. Yeah, I think so. Thank you. Um, and then the second question is quite general. Uh, so what are the benefits of Horizon now and what achievement have been obtained so far by Horizon? Well, that's a very broad question. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so no, I'll, I'll give a quick stab then, Roth, if you want to add in add some more context here. But I would say the the fundamental achievement is that we've had uh, a working, improved blockchain over the last three years. And then the most significant innovation that we've brought to the table was this last Monday on enabling uh, the first step towards a fully decentralized sidechain ecosystem. Um, so th this is, you know, our, our first probably simple and most important application so far has been to have Zen, the cryptocurrency, uh, and to secure that and to secure it in, you know, some interesting ways, uh, for instance, with our delayed block penalty system, which, again, you can read more details about in white paper 2.0 uh, or its own some white paper that we have for that. Um, and, you know, beyond that, the, the real innovation lies on the horizon, no pun in intended. Yeah, I can just add a, a, yeah, please, yeah, a couple please, yeah. things to it. Um, we're still uh, working on the vision from when we first launched. We uh, figured out that these unique and different ways of doing side chains is the best way to do it. Uh, we have ongoing funding, but what I'm most proud of is the team that we've built. We have really one of the best teams in crypto uh, across all different uh, activity domains that need to be done. The team works well together. Um, it, it's got a vision, so we're really uh, running on all cylinders. And I think people are going to see not only the software development of unique technology, but also we're marketing, we're engaging with users, we're engaging with partners, um, and we just have everything going that, that we need to, including accounting and legal and help desk <sighs> and everything, right? So I, I'm most happy with, with the team that uh, you as the leader, Rob, have put together. Now, Roth, that blew my answer away. I have to say that's really amazing. And then let me append mine a little bit. I mean, going beyond that, we've put together just such a robust ecosystem here. You know, on the BD side, we're, we're on over three dozen exchanges. We have, what, 50 plus partners, everyone from point of sale, you know, services to, you know, really every touch point that you would want in a blockchain ecosystem and beyond. Um, you know, we have wallets that are very usable, and including, you know, an absolutely beautiful uh, Sphere by Horizon wallet and then a whole bunch of other wallets. So, I mean, really what we've done over the last three years has just been, you know, it, under extremely volatile and restricted budgetary environment uh, is incredible. And what, Ralph, like you said, it's all because we focused on building just a fantastic team that works really well together. And we're just getting better. 
Thank you so much. Very well said. I myself be super, super proud to be the best, uh, to be part of the best team. Um, the next question is, uh, when will we start work on DAO and note tracking on side chains? Hmm. Yeah, no, it, so I, I meant, I alluded to that in the first question, but basically, uh, at a minimum, after beta on sidechains, because these systems are designed for our sidechain um, system. And in addition to that, we have to face the budget reality that we're in, and that Zen is pretty close to an all-time low right now. And what this means is our budget is denominated in Zen. The resources that we can apply to any project are in Zen. Uh, and the volatility of that resource pool has to be factored into advanced planning. So I, I would say post-beta, when resources um, you know make it possible, but these are very important systems for us because it goes to the core of you know what we want to achieve as a decentralized public market you know system. So they're very high priority, but we just need to face the reality that we we have to do things sort of sequentially right now. Uh, we can't do that much you know heavy engineering in parallel just because we don't have the resources. And guys, if you want to see it and you love what we're doing, then you know maybe the price of Zen will be to a point where we can actually you know, do a lot more in parallel. I, I'm very confident with where we're going, but we just have to you know, be pragmatic and, you know, responsible with our resources. That's it. That's all the questions, the top three questions of the day. Thank you. Back to Angie. Well, thank you all again for being here. Have a wonderful uh, day and night and we'll see you soon. Bye-bye. Well, thank you very much, everyone. Thank you, everyone. Bye, guys. Ciao, Thanks, guys. Bye-bye. Bye. Ciao, guys. Bye, guys. Bye.